I apologize for being late to the party, but I had some personal family stuff to deal with. But hey, we're here talking about probably one of my favorite shows from Netflix. Sex education has created quite a fan following, and it's not because of the provocative content, but the beautiful way in which it has developed keen interest among viewers in the relationships and its characters. While everyone would want to debate about what is the best teen show on the internet, swaying between Skins or Euphoria, I think Sex Education is right up there in contention to be termed as one of the best teen shows of all time. So where did we end season two? Otis's mother Jean finds out that she is pregnant. Maeve and her troubled relationship with her mother continues as she gets to know that she is using drugs again. Adam confesses his love for Eric, and this wheelchair sitting prick, pardon my French, deleted the heartfelt voice message that Otis sent to Maeve. We start season 3 after the summer where Otis and Ruby are hanging out with one another. Maeve has got new bangs which are rather sus. Amy is still dealing with the psychological effects of being sexually assaulted. Viv is in full sucker mode as she has aspirations to get into university. Adam is still struggling to express himself as he owns this new relationship with Eric. Jean deals with her pregnancy and the process of co-parenting with the father of the child with the introduction of a new headmaster, Hope, who really wants to change the public image of Morde We see drastic alterations made which seem necessary initially but become rather authoritarian. What would transpire this season with the characters individually and the dynamic that they share over the course of two seasons? Will Mortis finally happen? Is Isaac still a piece of shit? Will Mordel lose its identity? All of this is basically explored in season 3. Before I even get to talking about it without hearing my piece just tell me in the comments below your favorite characters this season who did you think had the best character arc and finally what was the relationship or dynamic that irked you from a writing standpoint and the one that resonated with you the most here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the show so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it on Netflix or not the underwhelming aspects uninteresting subplots This is only going to be a personal preference. I know the characters from this show have their own separate fan bases, so I don't want to offend anyone, but there were certain subplots which for me personally didn't interest me or that I felt from a screenplay perspective just seemed a bit lethargic. While the relationship between Lily and Ola is eccentric to say the least, the obsession with crop circles, role play of aliens and simply the existence of extraterrestrial beings didn't interest me that much. I think the casting of a character like Lily is pitch perfect and there is a brilliant origin story that is showcased in the latter half of the season, but somehow I just did not connect with their subplot. While the trip to France is quite the hilarious episode, I got a tad bit uncomfortable when there are long shots and zoom-ins of human excrement. So for all of you who have seen it the comedy of errors that takes place on the trip is no doubt hilarious but long sequences of human feces being on the screen just makes you look away rather than being invested in the bizarre events wasted opportunities a non-binary character by the name of Cal is introduced in this season and i felt that the writing of the character was more to educate the viewers rather than in naturally assimilating with the storyline a lot of the dialogues that Cal has are about the specificity that goes into queer relationships and the term in technologies that exist with individuals that identify as non-binary it in many moments seemed like a crash course of the marginalized section of society rather than a natural flow in the conversation i think a wasted opportunity with this character was that the creators could have provided us a picture of cal's family dynamic hence making it a little clearer of how cal's personality shaped the way it did without exactly saying what happens i really fell in love with ruby this season her tough exterior that finally broke down because of otis provided us a glimpse into a beautiful and sensitive character but the creators almost forget about out her in the latter half of the season which seemed kind of ruthless from an editing perspective i also felt that while everyone was waiting for that final mortis moment because we've been begging for it for so long a lot of the sequences of otis and mave seemed rush how is it that i resonated more with the otis ruby dynamic than the otis and mave one let me know whether you felt the same way as well there are several character choices especially by mave which didn't sit right with me especially when you think about isaac in the picture as well i can't reveal too much because this is a non spoiler review but let me know whether you felt a similar way as well the good 
production design and costumes. For anyone who is a fan of the show, you will be pretty certain of experiencing an 80s vibe from the visual experience. From the costume design as well as the sets, it's actually reflective of the inspiration of the show, which is John Hughes' teen movies from the 80s. So if you've seen movies like 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the costumes are actually inspired from that era. I'm actually a huge fan of this aesthetic. While Otis's jacket has created quite the buzz for everyone to seek for knockoffs in the market, the costume design of this series has definitely led to people doing makeovers of their own personal closets. Soundtrack I'm absolutely baffled by how people are not raving about the amazing choice of songs utilized in season 3. The songs are not only reflective of the mood of the scene, perfectly enhancing the emotion that rides along, but never really take center stage, an essential component that often people forget about with soundtracks. Then She Kissed Me by Hello in Episode 1, Saving a Prayer by Duran Duran, Nails, Hair, Hips, Heels by Todrick Hall as Eric gets ready for a date, When I Live My Dream by David Bowie. I can go on and on about this soundtrack. My favorite, however, has to be the dance hall tracks which are reflective of Eric's Nigerian roots. The tracks Joro by Wizkid and Attention by Tiva Savage are all artists and tracks you should definitely revisit if you haven't already. Relationships and Character Arcs if there is one character whose arc is beautifully crafted in season 3, it is Adam played by Connor Swindles. This man went from being an absolute douchebag to a character who the viewers know now is broken from within, having deep roots to the way he has been brought up. It is a combination of the brilliant writing and a heartfelt performance by the actor that really make you empathize with his journey. His want to be better, to be vulnerable with his loved ones, there are several moments which will honestly make you very emotional. We also get a deeper look at Ruby and her personal life and my heart goes out for this character in season 3. She is a person who was conscious of keeping her heart on her sleeve. She always had a tough exterior and the moment she finally let go of all those barriers, it's really heartbreaking to say the least. I have to say that Isaac is still an asshole in my eyes. There is no deep repentance that he feels for what he did and it kind of irked me so screw his redemption arc because I did not resonate with that at all. I further love to see vulnerable scenes between Jean and Otis. There's one shared in the latter half of the season that will honestly make you wish for an open and beautiful relationship just like theirs. The writing. What needs to be understood is that the criticism that shows like this get is teen shows mein sab kuch dikhate hain par padhai karte hue nahi dikhate. But quite on the contrary, sex education has to be one of the most educational teen shows that exist on a streaming platform. On the surface level, this show might come across to you as being sexually suggestive or titillating, but it's actually much more than that. It brings sexual awareness among young adults that empowers them with knowledge. It sheds light on the struggles individuals have in simply coming out. It speaks about the dated con that comes with being a man and the traits one should have, the detrimental psychological effects of porn and how it manifests in real life, the stigma associated with pregnancy at a later stage in life, the hesitance when it comes to therapy, this show honestly speaks to a large population that feels suffocated in merely expressing themselves for their personal choices in a public space. A section of people that are misunderstood or simply curtailed for being themselves. While I still think that season 1 and 2 are superior to this season, it still sheds light on several hurdles teens face that is barely talked about, especially in the Indian market. And it is much needed to go past the judgement that you may have on a surface level for this show, as it is much more than what meets the eye. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about the show. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the handles are right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.